الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Excellence of reciting Durood and Salam, the believing Muslim with devotion three times in the morning, with love and devotion, and three times in the evening, love and devotion, Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive the sins he committed that day. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri. Rizvi Damat Barakat Mu'aliya has formulated a comprehensive collection of Sharia and Tariqa in the form of questions, making it easy to perform good deeds and abstain from sins in this era of evils. This collection has been termed as 72 Madri in Ahmad for Islamic brothers. The new name is Naik Amal, which can be obtained from the ISO device or Android device, an app that you can download to do your self-accountability. Try to obtain this, inshallah, if you want to become pious. Today we're going to be discussing question number 26. If some responsible brother or any common Islamic brother committed a wrongdoing and needs to be rectified, did you attempt to rectify him in a polite manner? either in writing or by meeting him in person, O Allah, you committed the grave sin of backbiting by revealing it some, some other without stipulation of Sharia. So inshallah today we're going to learn from Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu how we can rectify someone. If someone makes a mistake inside the masajid or if he say make the mistake outside then how do we approach that person and how do we rectify him? It is mentioned one day when Sayyidina Hassan and Sayyidina Hussein rahmallahu ta'ala alayhi were still small boys. An old Bedouin from the desert visited their home in Medina. The old man was new to Islam. When it was time to do the prayer and the old man began to do wudu, ablution, it soon became apparent that he did not know how to perform wudu properly. Hassan and Hussein, rahmallahu ta'ala alayhi, both knew that it is necessary to do wudu correctly and wanted to show the old Bedouin how to do it. But first, they were not sure how to tell him. If he were to be told plainly by two small boys that he did not even know how to do wudu, he might feel awkward and he might feel ashamed. Fortunately, they thought of a good way to teach him without having to openly point out his mistakes. After putting some water in a jug, they too prepared to do wudu, meaning ablution. But before starting, they asked the old Bedouin to watch them. Excuse me, old man. They said respectfully, we want to make sure that we are doing wudu properly. Please, would you watch us and tell us how or tell us if you make any mistakes? Having said this, they both did wudu ex exactly as it should be done. With the old Bedouin intentively watching them. By the time they had both finished, he had learned how to do wudu properly. Alhamdulillah, correctly, without having been made to feel embarrassed. Yes, he said with a smile, you both know how to do wudu pro perfectly. So this way they've done his islah as well, and they didn't offend him by pointing, you've done this wrong, you just need to do it properly like this, 
So look how they did it. They did the example first themselves. The Bedouin washed them and he learned from their mistakes. So this is how we should be rectifying people. And sometimes it is, it's mentioned, did we go behind his back? After seeing a mistake he did, did we start telling other people? This is against Sharia as well. We have to be careful of this. Question number 27. Did you observe parda over parda? Meaning veil over veil. In a household and outside both. Did you make the effort to keep your face towards the Holy Kaaba while sitting? In today's society, we're coming across our Islamic sisters, women, not covering their hair, their body parts, and same with brothers wearing shorts when they're going to play cricket or football or badminton. And we have to protect our eyes in this case. It is mentioned in the hadith that man who looks at women and women who lustfully glance at men should have piety on their weak bodies and frighten themselves from the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. There is a very long hadith in Sharis Sudur which mentions the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam saying, Then I saw people with nails hammered into their eyes and ears. On inquiring the reason for this, I was told they looked at what you did not look at and listened to what you did not listen to. So this is a hadith of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We should try to wear clothing, appropriate clothing, so that no one commits the sins of the eyes. And same again when we're watching other programs, television, news reporters, we have to control our gaze and not look at that person. Veil upon veil, we should look at ourselves. Look at Amir Ahl Sunnah, Damad Barakatum wa Aliyah. When you point a, a finger at someone, three fingers are pointing back at yourself. So first of all, we need to sort ourselves out. Before we say, look this person, he doesn't dress properly. Uh, look when he comes for salah and when he goes to ruku or sujood, his back is being revealed. For a sitter, for a male, is from the navel to the knees. This has to be covered. But if you go in ruku and sujood, what's happening is you're revealing your back. And what's when you reveal your back, you validate your salah. Okay, so we have to be careful of these things. So may Allah give us the ability to cover ourselves with according to the Sharia. And whenever you do any wazaif, any Quran recitation, sit in the direction of the Qibla. And feel the fezan of the Kaaba when you do any wazaif. Even when you read reciting through the park, try to picture the green dome and recite through the park upon the beloved blessed Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Number 28. Today when fell anger or someone in the household or outside, did you react by speaking out or cured your anger by observing silence? Moreover, did you forgive or did you keep on seeking opportunity for settling the score? Imran al-Tari sallam al-Bari rahmallah. What did they say? First, weigh your speech. Pele tolo, fir bolo. But what it is, is sometimes we fire, we get angry at people. We say words that break the hearts of people, our brothers and sisters. We might say certain things, swear words, or anything that would break the heart. There's a hadith that a scholar mentions, which I don't have it with me at this moment, but I'm going to give you the mafum of this hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with his wife, Sayyidatuna Sayyidatuna Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. And the Prophet Sallallahu expressed happiness. And he said to his beloved wife, he said, ask me whichever question you like. And Sayyidatuna Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha asked the permission of the beloved to go and do a Madri Mashra with her beloved father. Ya Rasulullah, I'd like to discuss it with my father for what question to ask you. So she went to her beloved father, Rahamallahu ta'ala alayhi, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Sadiq, and they did a Madri Mashra. The father advised his beloved Beti, he said that, ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he went on the night of Miraj, 
Tell us one secret from there. But as she was leaving the court of her beloved father, the beloved father said, tell me what Rasulullah tells you. I'd like to know the secret as well. So she goes back to Rasulullah and she asks the beloved, last Prophet وسلم, Ya Rasulullah, tell me one of the secrets of the night of Mayraj. And the Prophet وسلم, said that whoever revives a broken heart, whoever is upset, whoever is heartbroken, and someone revives that heart, makes that person happy, Allah Azza wa Jal will grant that person paradise. So this, after hearing this, her beloved daughter, Abu Bakr Sadiq's Rahmallahu Ta'ala, daughter, as it Aisha Sadiqa, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha, went back to her beloved father and told her the good news. Whoever breaks, uh, whoever revives a broken heart, he is granted paradise. As Abu Bakr Siddiq rahmallahu ta'ala anhu started to cry with tears. And the, the beloved daughter asked, Oh father, why are you crying? And he said, what if someone does the opposite? Whoever breaks someone's heart with words of discomfort, swears. I'm just giving you examples. What we do nowadays. Talking behind people's back. Ghiba, backbiting, causing hatred. This tongue that we need to control. As Abu Bakr Siddiq said, if he breaks someone's heart, then he's going to go to hellfire, isn't he? Yeah? So it's the opposite of the hadith, what the Prophet wasallam said. Yeah? And if he breaks someone's heart, then we have to be careful. Sometimes we might be at home and with the husband and wife, we might get upset with each other. And you know the matter of divorces happen because of anger. And when a husband becomes fuming, he becomes angered and he comes out with the words and then he realizes afterwards I made a mistake. And this is important that we control our anger and we speak when it's appropriate and we keep silence most of the times and try to do the zikr of Allah. And if you, if you feel that you're feeling really, really angry and you can't control your anger, is to try to sit down. And if that you feel that you feel still feel hungry, angry, then have a glass of water. Have a glass of water. Calm yourself down. And if you still feel hang angry, then lie down. You know, just get your blood pressure going down a bit. Your blood might be circling and fuming really fastly, thinking I'm getting angry. But these things help if you sit down. You know, if someone's going to be going to fight with someone, what would you do? You would grab him. You know, sit, just come here. Yara. Just sit down for a second. Yeah, you'll calm him down. And the anger goes away. Yeah? And then you'll give him a glass of water. Yeah, chill out. Just calm down. Here, have this. You know, we'll talk about it. So, yeah. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us the ability to control our anger. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen. قلت حيلة أنت وسيلة أدركني يا رسول الله والله عز وجل accept our salat al isha in your court and with the blessing of this salat al isha ya Allah forgive our major minor sins today we have learned good manners we have learned to adopt the manners of Hassan and Hussein رحم الله تعالى عليه ya Allah عز وجل give us ability to rectify people in a sweet way in a sweet manner by taking them to the side and telling them the uh, the mistakes ya allah azza wa we have mistakes also ya allah azza wa give us the ability to rectify ourselves first before we start rectifying other people ya allah azza wa give make us uh, to make us good example people give us the ability to follow the sunnah of the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and also ya allah azza wa give us the ability to refrain from backbiting and also ya allah give us the ability to wear a madri labas Give us our sisters the covering. Give them haya. Give them the respect and the love of Hazrat Bibi Fatima rahmallahu ta'ala. Ya Allah Azza wa Jal. Give them the respect of uh, Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. Ya Allah Azza wa Jal. Give them the love of the Ahl Bayt. Ya Allah Azza wa Jal. The manners we have learned. Ya Allah Azza wa Jal. Give us the ability to act upon these manners and to adopt them 
and to use them in a good way. Ya Allah, last and final. Ya Allah, give his ability to control our anger. Ya Allah, those who have temper problems, Ya Allah, remove them temper problems from them. Ya Allah, cure the anger. Ya Allah, those who are quarreling with each other, husband and wife, Ya Allah, take that quarrel away from the houses. Ya Allah, take away the anxiety and the depression. Ya Allah, give them sukoon and give them the love of the deen and give them the ability to watch Madini channel. Ya Allah, if I made any mistakes in my dars, I ask Allah to forgive us and give us the istiqamat in deen. Ya Allah, bless the brothers who have joined the jamaat today and who have joined into the, the small dars. Ya Allah, give them success and give them the capability and the ability to, to preach Islam. Ya Allah, those uh, people who are watching via social media, listening via the radio, brothers and sisters, Ya Allah, bless their homes and accept their sincere du'as for the sake of the beloved. Sallallahu ala nabiyyi al-ummiyyi wa alihi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salatan wa salaman alayki ya Rasulullah, bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin.